let's look at some specific applications of clustering to web data mining in particular so one of the applications of clustering is in what's known as whole corpus analysis or navigation okay so uh, the way to describe this is probably best through an example now this is not something that you find in a search engine more uh, appropriately you can think of this application of clustering as being part of a browse engine okay so what is a browse engine a browse engine is an engine where you don't actually type in queries to look for documents but you actually browse the web starting from some home page and then you um, you identify broad topics that you are interested in and then you click on some broad topic that is shown to you and then when when you click on it you will again be shown a cluster of smaller topics within that broader topic actually a good example of that is the yahoo hierarchy that we had seen some time back right if you if you go to the yahoo directory basically it's a taxonomy of topics okay so if you start from the home page for yahoo directory you will see a set of uh top level topics arranged in a list and then you can click on any of them when you click on any of these topics then you'll be shown sub topics within that topic and continuing in this way you can go down this hierarchy to narrower and narrower topics until at the leaf level you will be shown a list of web pages corresponding to that topic if you recall i think we looked at the example of going down physics and then astronomy and then we looked we we came to an astronomer and then when we clicked on the word astronomer we saw a list of pages uh, corresponding to uh, you know different astronomers like there was a page on carl sagan and so on i think in a previous lecture you may recall that so that is an example of browsing okay you're not giving a query but you are browsing this hierarchy you're starting from the root down to uh, some leaf level topic by a sequence of clicks and that is what is shown here uh in this particular slide this is in a, uh, a research product called scatter gather so imagine this this is from the early 1990s imagine this you start from the top of the hierarchy just like the yahoo directory and you will be shown a list of topics okay, these are the top level topics now what you will do is instead of pick clicking on one single link you could choose multiple topics that are of interest to you so by the way each of these topics is a cluster of documents you think of each of these topics as a cluster of documents now you could decide that you are interested in topics iraq oil and germany these are the three topics that interest you so you'll choose some maybe some kind of checkbox indicating your uh, interest for these topics and unlike a click you are indicating your interest for potentially multiple topics here once you do that then the engine will present to you finer clusters within these three clusters okay so what the engine will do is it will gather the documents that fall into these higher level clusters and then come up with a more refined clustering of documents that lie in these three clusters so those the, the more refined uh, clusters are shown over here deployment politics germany pakistan africa markets oil hostages and then again you could choose uh, one or more topics out of these lower level relatively lower level topics and then the engine will again gather the documents that fall into these clusters and then again come up with even more finer sets of clusters so you can see that with each step you are identifying more and more specific topics that interest you 
until at the leaf level you will end up with all the documents that are relevant to the specific topic that you are interested in okay now this may look uh, relatively tedious right and that's probably why browse engines are not you know popular on the web uh, most people just want to type the topic that interests them and expect to see a list of documents that uh, are relevant to that topic whereas here you are you're not actually typing in a query you are doing a sequence of clicks and it turns out that the more you expect a user to click in order to get what the user wants the less likely most users are to use such kinds of products but you know this is something that you could potentially use uh, as an application of clustering to develop a browse engine so in a similar way you could uh, let's say you are you, you just have a large corpus of documents and you want to figure out you, you, you just want to divide those documents into different clusters just like you know a librarian who is given a large volume of books may want to cluster those books based on their subject area so there are some products uh, that use cl clustering algorithms in order to take documents and then cluster them into you know a bunch of clusters and then help you visualize what each cluster is okay so they will assign labels for each cluster and they will depict each cluster by this terrain this mountainous terrain where each mountain corresponds to uh, one particular cluster and the documents belonging to that cluster are basically what m make up the mountain and so you can imagine different graphical ways of visualizing uh, this kind of uh, um, document collection okay, based on what topics the different documents uh, are about okay, again but these kind of products have are not so popular because uh, you know they are not as easy to use as a search engine even though the uh, UI looks a lot more cool so that's one application of clustering another application of clustering is uh, let me look at the third one first better navigation of search results okay what does that mean I had given you an example before of a clustering engine called Clusty or uh, if you remember I think in lecture one or two so Clusty was a search engine that was developed at Carnegie Mellon University now it's called as Yippie Y I P P Y Yippie.com and if you type in a query on Yippie, let's try to do that. Um, so it is like a typical search engine, but when you type in a query like say Jaguar, while a normal search engine would give you a linear list of ranked results, Clusty will tell you what clusters the results fall into so the word Jaguar is a relatively ambiguous word it has many different uh, meanings it's the name of a car it's the name of a company it's the name of an animal it's the name of a Land Rover and so on so these individual clusters correspond to different meanings of the word Jaguar so if you are interested in let's say the animal Jaguar then in a search engine you would have to navigate each individual result that you are shown and see if that result corresponds to the animal jaguar or not whereas if you are able to cluster your results into different clusters corresponding to different meanings of the word then you can specifically identify your interest in, uh, in one particular meaning of the word jaguar and then the results you get when you click will be documents that fall within that cluster okay, instead of just documents that are uh, that contain the word Jaguar these will be documents that specifically are clustered into the animal class
okay so another example is google news okay, if you go to news.google.com and if you type in a particular topic or a let's say the name of a particular country uh, or, a, or or a particular person then you'll be shown news items about that particular topic but though they will be clustered into different uh, sections okay so some of the news items will be so obviously different newspapers all publish very similar articles pertaining to a particular event so you will you can expect all those articles to be clustered together in the result okay, so if I go and type say India so this is one cluster India says no to $80 toilet paper here's another cluster broad expects India to react so this is about cricket this one is about some other topic and you know this is about some other topic this is about some you know some plane that skidded off a runway so you can see that the documents pertaining to that particular topic that particular event in India have been grouped together into this particular cluster and likewise for other clusters so that's one of the applications of clustering even in search now clustering is not just used uh, so this is an application of clustering where the user is helped in understanding the results okay these clusters are shown to the user so the user finds it easier to uh, locate the documents that are of specific interest to him or her but there is also um, another application of clustering where clustering can help you improve recall for particular search queries okay. now there is there was one particular topic called pseudo uh, relevance feedback relevance feedback and pseudo relevance feedback chapter 9 of your book which we didn't which we did not discuss and we probably won't have the time to uh, go into that in this particular uh, course but uh, let me give you another example of what this could uh, mean this is not relevance feedback relevance feedback is one example of the point that I just shown the other example is this suppose you group all the documents in your corpus into a bunch of clusters corresponding to similarity okay so the documents that are in the same cluster are documents that are similar to one another they deal with the same topic and uh, uh, something like what I showed you in news.google.com but these clusters are a priori defined and so when a query comes and a particular document in the cluster is detected as relevant to the query we will also return all the other documents in the cluster which contain that that particular document D okay and we'll we'll return that entire cluster of documents if any document inside it is deemed relevant then all the documents in that cluster will be returned to the user <coughs> and the advantage of that is let's say your cluster of documents deal with the topic car okay and if your clustering algorithms are intelligent then they will also have documents in that cluster which have words like automobile they need not have the the, the exact word car they could have synonyms of the word car also so when a query like car comes in all the documents in this particular cluster would be returned and these include the documents which contain the word automobile in addition to the word car okay. of course there are other ways to handle synonyms we saw some ways when we talked about tokenization and normalization where you can normalize different uh, terms that mean the same thing uh, sorry you can normalize different tokens which mean the same thing to the same term in your dictionary and that's another way by which you can retrieve results which contain synonyms of words in the query 
but this is another way to look at it which is that you have a set of predefined clusters and then if any of the documents in that cluster is deemed relevant then other documents in the cluster are also returned and the final application of clustering in web data mining would be for speeding up vector space retrieval and this is something we saw I think in chapter 7 when we talked about cluster pruning and the idea there was similar to what we talked about a few, uh, just a minute ago where you choose where you create these clusters of documents based on similarity so that when your query is detected as being similar uh, so recall that for each cluster we define the notion of a leader who represents that cluster and the leader had a set of follower documents the other documents which belong to that cluster so the leader along with the group of followers made up one cluster so when a query comes in wh recall what we did in cluster pruning we we found out which was the cluster that was closest to the query right by comparing the similarity of the query with each of the leaders of those square root of n clusters that we had defined and then once we decided that this particular query was close to these one or more clusters then we would focus our uh, search specifically to documents in that cluster instead of you know instead of exploring all the documents that are in the collection because the likelihood that documents in that particular cluster will be relevant to the query is higher right and uh, the in a search engine uh, we ordinarily won't be looking beyond the first top 10 or 20 results and so precision is what's more important than recall so even if there were some other documents in other clusters which were relevant to the query it's okay if our goal is to maximize the precision and in search engines precision is what matters more than recall so that's something you could do to speed up vector space retrieval right we saw cluster pruning in fact specifically as a way to as one of the ways to speed up the computation of these distances between the query and all the documents in your collection okay so these are different examples of clustering any questions about this so I hope the motivation for clustering is clear to you